Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back. If you're a subscriber, special thanks to all of my patrons. My name's Neil and it's time for another episode of University Challenge. We continue to make our way through the second round of this year's competition. Um, this is match four of the second round, so we're halfway through. This uh, is a Oxford versus Cambridge match. St. Hilda's Oxford versus Trinity Cambridge. I remember Trinity in particular putting in a very strong first round performance, so I suspect that they will be um, very strong again. So much of it obviously depends on the luck of the draw as far as the questions and topics of concern but uh, they seem to be a really well-rounded team, if I remember. I don't have too much more to offer, so let's jump right into it, guys. This is episode 20 of series 51, St. Hilda's Oxford versus Trinity Cambridge. At the end of tonight's match, we'll have filled four of the Taxman eight places always available repeats in me. the quarterfinal stage of this competition. Now, the team from St. Hilda's College, Oxford, scraped a victory against University College London in their first appearance. I, re I reacted to that match. I remember these guys. The team from Trinity College, Cambridge, had a much more comfortable first round match, beating Durham University by 190 points to 90. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first starter for 10. Derived from the Greek for a collection of flowers, what term denotes works such as The Good Immigrant, edited by Nikesh Shukla, Being Alive, edited by Neil Astley, and The Zoo of the New, edited by... Anthology. Anthology is correct, yes. In a play by Shakespeare, Charmian and Iras are named among the attendants of which historical figure who lived in the first century BC? Julius Caesar. Peri oh, no, he was not. See, Julius Caesar or Mark Antony would be the ones you want. Yeah, yeah, um, Julius Caesar. That's no, Cleopatra. <laughs> According to a legend depicted in a painting by Tiepolo, what naturally occurring object used in jewellery did Cleopatra dissolve in a drink during a banquet arranged in honour of Mark Antony. Um, I think um, it was a pearl. Pearl is correct. Areas of ancient Egypt known as Cleopatra's mines were a major source of which coloured cyclosilicate mineral, a variety of beryl? Emerald. Emerald is correct. What six-letter word links the second longest river of Ireland, an ancient burial mound, Bonnie Parker's partner in crime? Clyde. No and an industrial town on the Furness Peninsula in South Cumbria. Barrow. Trinity Nyogi. Barrow? Barrow is correct. Yep, wrong part of Clyde Barrow, isn't it? A market failure may occur in a situation in which production or consumption of goods and services results in consequences that no one pays for. By what term are such consequences known? Surplus? Unforeseen collapse. No, there are externalities. Market failures provide a rationale for government intervention. Founded by Karl Menger, which school of economics notably critiques this approach? Free market. Austrian. It is the Austrian Thank school, you. yes. No doubt. Distinctive features of which planetary satellite include oval-shaped formations known as coronae and cliffs of up to 20 kilometres in height? The fifth largest moon of Uranus. It's named after a character in Shakespeare's Tempest. Calliope. Ah. Trinity Kent. Miranda. Miranda is Miranda, correct. Right. Tempest. These bonuses are on words that end in the suffix sum, S-O-M-E, a word firstly meaning pleasing and engaging, often because of a childlike charm and innocence. Winsome. Winsome is correct. Secondly, a somewhat archaic word meaning injurious, troublesome or foul smelling. Noisome. So something to do with smell, like... Bad smell, right? So like, yeah, it's noisome, it's though. Right. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking irksome. Mm. But it's not like sewers. in that yeah. context, is not He wouldn't use it to describe sewers, something like... Um... Odorsome? No, it's noisome. Mm. Signifying fleshy or corpulent when applied to body dimensions, what word often appears before praise or tributes, meaning excessively Fulsome. lavish Fulsome. or overdone? Fulsome. 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 Fulsome is correct. You're going to see a definition of a French term used in ballet in French. Jeté. Trinity Nyogi. Uh, on point. On point is correct. Firstly, this three-word French term. When two dancers execute uh, a long duo. Uh, pas de deux? Pas de deux is correct, pas de yes. Secondly, I'm looking for a single word here. Um, it's a pose, so like... Is it a plié? No, it's an arabesque. Oh, sorry. Oh, and <laughs> finally, I'm again looking for a single word, this one. Uh, on two feet. Uh, Two feet. Pyramid? Um, 
Is that pirouette? Yeah. Pirouette. Sure. Pirouette. Pirouette is correct. Well done. Wow. Good for them. Which royal figure was nominated for the 1901 Nobel Peace Prize for his promotion of the Hague Peace Conference? His troops carried out the Bloody Sunday Massacre early in 1905, after which he agreed to demands for a national legislature. Uh, in 1918... Trinity Kim, Nicholas II. Nicholas II is correct. <laughs> you have the two short words that begin the titles of all of the following. Firstly, a novel by Samuel Butler, published posthumously in 1903. Secondly, a restoration comedy by Congreve concerning the lovers Mirabelle and Malamont, and Anthony Trollope's satirical novel about the dangers of speculative capitalism. A day. The way? It is the way, yes. Mm. Your bonuses are on towns and cities on the River Danube. OK. Firstly, a castle town close to the Danube bend. It gives its name to an international cooperation group comprising Hungary, Poland, Slovakia and the Czech Republic. Nominate. Uh, nominate Kim. Bishofrat. Bishofrat is correct. Wow. The capital of the autonomous region of Vojvodina in northern Serbia. Northern Serbia. Belgrade. Okay. It's Novi Sad. Oh, Novi yeah. Sad. And of finally, course. a city in southwest Germany, the birthplace of Albert Einstein. Um, the spire um, of its. Ulm. Ulm is correct, yes, well done. Ulm is on the Danube, okay, cool. Who is this? He was born in the Binnenhof Palace in 1650, eight days after the death of his father. He married his 15-year-old first cousin at Whitehall on his 27th birthday. He died without legitimate issue in Kensington Palace in 1702, having survived his wife by eight years. Trinity Kim, William III or William of Orange. Correct. Concluding a poem written in 1919, which poet asks, What rough beast... It's uh, our come yes, at last yes. slouches uh, towards Bethlehem. Yates, yeah. W. B. Yeats is correct. Slouching towards Bethlehem is the title of a collection of essays describing 1960s California by which U.S. writer, also noted for her 2005 work, Joan Didion. Correct. Also entitled Slouching Towards Bethlehem, which Canadian singer-songwriter provided a musical Robert setting for Yeats's poem in her 1991 oh. album. Night Ride Home. Celine Dion or Shania Twain? No, Neil Young. No, Leonard Cohen. Uh, Leonard Cohen. Oh, it's it's either Leonard right. Cohen or Neil Young. Oh, it's Joni Mitchell. Oh, Joni oh. Mitchell. <laughs> Bad luck. Oh, Which of Shakespeare's characters was described by William Hazlitt in 1817 as the author's only purely contemplative character? Hamlet. No. You lose five points. Jacques. Jacques. Jacques is correct, yes. The bonus is this time on the South American artist Tarsila do Amaral. A 2018 exhibition of Tarsila's work in New York was named Inventing Modern Art in What Country? She was born in the 1880s near an inland city that is now one of the largest of the Southern Hemisphere. Brazil. Cities? Largest? Brazilia. Yeah. Is Buenos Aires inland? No. I'd say Colombia. Colombia's got some big inland cities. Colombia is... La Paz. No, you want the country. No, Brazil. Sorry, no. the Brazil, the country, sorry. One of Tarsila's best-known works, Abaporo, depicts an elongated human figure next to what succulent plant associated with arid regions? Cactus. Well, cactuses. No. Is that succulent? Yeah, yeah. I mean, cactuses are succulents. It's a cactus. Cacti? Cactus is correct. In the 1920s, Tarsila studied in France under Albert Glaze a leading exponent of what artistic movement? France in the 20s? Surrealism. Expressionism. No, it's Cubism. Oh, oh, if your music starts, you'll hear a piece of popular music. For 10 points, please name the artist. <laughs> Trinity Brecker. David Bowie. David Bowie is correct, yes. For your bonuses, I want you to identify three more musicians who've made notable use of alter egos. First, this solo artist. I can is that Hank Williams? It is Hank Williams, Ramblin' Man. Secondly, name either the band or its leader here. Well, all right. Citizens Parliament. Yes, I'll accept that. Yes, George Clinton. Excellent. Finally, name this solo artist. Oh, that's uh, Nicki Minaj. Nice. Nicki Minaj. It is Nicki Minaj as a male alter ego, named after a daughter-mother team and based on the academic theories of Meyer Briggs. Young. What type indicator was introduced? Ah. Trinity Brecker. Myers Briggs. 
Pius Briggs is correct. Which ruler's tomb is located at Nakshi Rostam near Persepolis? The Athenians defeated his army at the Battle of Marathon. Darius the first. Or yeah. the Great, yes. The tomb of which 19th century US president is located in Riverside Park in New York and bears the inscription, Let us have peace. It is the largest mausoleum in North America. Teddy Roosevelt or Woodrow Wilson? Surely no, what, nations and Teddy, well, no, no. Late, late 19th century. It's going to be Teddy. It's got to be Teddy Roosevelt. I think it's before that. Okay. Teddy Maybe Roosevelt. Grant. Grant. Correct. Oh, okay. Grant's yeah. tomb, of course. Situated on the left bank of the Seine, what complex consisting of 17th century structures and courtyards houses the tomb of Napoleon Bonaparte? Invalid. Oh, the Invalid. Les Invalides is correct, yes. This is a demolishment. To sing, what name means a religious foundation Chantez. in which, in return for an endowment, the souls of the donor and their family will be prayed for, often in a specially constructed chapel that house... Chancery? No. You lose five points. A specially constructed chapel that house the donor's remains. Carmen? It's a chantry. The birthplace of the emperors Trajan and Hadrian, the ruins of the... St Hilda's Genesio. Spain. No, you lose five points. <laughs> They're down the to zero. The Roman town this is of painful. Italica lie close to which Spanish city? It is the setting of operas including Mozart's Don Giovanni and Bizet's Carmen. Trinitinio. Seville. Seville. Seville is correct, yes. Plenty of time to get going, St Hilda's. <laughs> ouch! Ouch! In the standard model of particle physics, what is the second most massive fundamental particle and the only one to have zero spin? The Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is correct, yes. But here are your bonuses that are on the novels of James Baldwin. Which semi-autobiographical novel of 1953 by Baldwin details his school years as a preacher in a small revivalist church? Go tell it on the mountain. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Concerning an American who's torn between love for his girlfriend and a young male bartender, Baldwin's 1956 novel, Giovanni's Room, is set largely in which European city? Yeah, Rome. Could be Rome. Could be Rome, could be Venice. No, it's Paris. Oh. <laughs> which novel of 1974 by Baldwin concerns a young man wrongly accused of a crime? It was adapted into an Academy Award winning film of 2018. Uh, 2018. It's with Denzel Washington. Offences? No, it's not. It's if Beale Street could talk. Street. If your picture starter, you'll see a painting. Ten points if you can name the artist. Matisse. It feels like... Degas. No. Van Gogh. No, it's Edvard Munch, Kissed by a Window. Born into a prominent Kurdish family in Tikrit, which military leader and dynastic founder captured Jerusalem in 1187, ending almost nine... Trinity Kim. Saladin. Saladin is correct, yes. Three more paintings of figures by windows. Firstly... Oh. Uh, um, that's very... Fertile. My brother's museum literally just bought this painting. Yeah, it is much too, so. And I can't remember it. Um, it's a lesser-known guy. Uh, my initial guess was Pissarro, but that's no. obviously... Yeah, no, it's so, um, <laughs> no. Uh, Edward Hopper. No, that's Gustav Kaibot. And secondly, who's this? That's, that's Renoir. Manny, isn't it? I would have said that it would be Renoir, but... Manet? No, it's Berta Morisot, Eugene oh. Manet on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> and finally... I don't know. That feels like Van Gogh, but... Yeah. Yeah. Renoir. No, but I don't recognise it at all. That's by Modigliani. In logic, what term denotes either of the first two propositions in a syllogism? Protasis? No. Anybody want to buzz from St Hilda's? They don't want to go negative. Premises? Premises is correct, yes. <laughs> what is the term for the first phase of meiosis during which chromatin condenses? Ten points for this. A woman's convention in Akron, Ohio in 1851 saw which evangelist and reformer deliver an extempore speech which became known by the title, Ain't I a Woman? Oh, no. St Hilda's Genesio. Sojourner Truth? Correct. Who acceded to the throne aged around nine months? His nominated protector during his minority being his uncle, Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester. Edward IV? No, it was Henry VI. VI. William Marshall acted as regent during the early reign of which king who acceded to the throne aged nine on the death of his father, King John? Henry III. Correct. Edward Seymour, later Duke of Somerset, was named Lord Protector during the reign of which king, also aged nine when he acceded to the I think throne? That might be Richard. Oh, okay. I thought it was Edward. Okay, Edward VI. 
Correct. Which British national trail runs roughly south-north from Sedbury Cliff to Prestatyn? More than 170 miles in length. It's named after an 8th century king of Mercia. Offer. Correct, yes. Right, you get a set of bonuses on collaborations between Johnny Depp and Tim Burton. OK. A 1999 film adaptation of a gothic story by Washington Irving. Edward Scissorhands, sorry. No, that's Sleepy Hollow. Secondly, a 1994 biopic in which Depp plays the title character, a director of cult films including Glenn Edward. or Glenda and Plan 9 from Outer Space. Edward. Edward is correct. Finally, a 2005 animation, Helena Bonham Carter is the voice of the title figure and Depp is her groom. No. No, it's not The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's The Corpse Bride. <laughs> the Corpse Bride. <laughs> <laughs> That's Corpse Bride. Give me your answer promptly. To the nearest metre in a hypothetical substance with a refractive index of one billion, how many metres would light travel in ten seconds? Uh, Trinity Kent. Three. Three metres. Three is correct, yes. <laughs> That was a demolishment. <sighs> Bad luck to you, St Hilda's. You were up against some pretty top-notch contestants there. And it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Yeah, there's some powerhouses in this tournament. Um, Edinburgh from last week, I believe. Trinity from this week. They're weeding out the, the average but lucky teams right now. And what's going to be left is going to be... Um, a, a really powerful top four, I think. So once we get to the semifinals, I think we've got some like extremely challenging quizzing ahead of us. Uh, very exciting to see. But yeah, that I I I, I, I feel bad for St. Hilda's because they got down to that point where they lost, where they buzzed in quickly because they had to because that was the only way they were going to be able to claw things back they guessed wrong and they fell they lost points because of it and ended up about down to zero at which point they were afraid to buzz in early at all because the last thing you want is a negative score i can only imagine how embarrassing that would be it, it would be memorable and talked about and everything else now it's just a bad beat down but people will forget about it by the next the following week so um they played it well they they made it if not respectable, at least immemorable. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's certainly not the worst worst beating in uh, in university challenge history. Not by a long shot, I'm sure. But yeah, every so often you just run into a buzzsaw of a team and there's not much you can do about it. Uh, hats off to Trinity Cambridge. They played really well. Clearly, they're just very well-rounded and very very good at the actual activity of quizzing. It's not just about the knowledge. It's about quickly accessing it. It's about buzzing in fast. It's about talking it over well in that team uh, setting. So um, yeah, they, they play the game well and uh, they're going to be tough to beat. Not unbeatable, but tough to beat. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. These are a blast to do. If you haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Hit that bell so you don't miss any of my future reactions. And until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy. We'll see you soon, and goodbye from me.